So you've come up with this great idea. You've got a game concept that you want to develop for a mobile device like the Android and be able to deploy it quickly and easily. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a simple game using the Unity game engine and deploy to the Android devices. The first thing you need to do is get the Unity 3D engine for the Android. This is available from the Unity website. It can be easily purchased and installed on your system. doesn't matter whether you're running a Mac or a PC. It will install and you can get development going in no time. So that's step one. Step two, you need to get the Java JDK installed on your computer system so that everything will run correctly in the background environment. The JDK can be downloaded from the Oracle website. Go to oracle.com, tech network, Java, Java SE, and go to the downloads and download the latest release of the Java Standard Edition. That's Java SE. Make sure you do get the JDK and not the JRE. The JDK is the Java Developers Kit whereas the JRE is the Java runtime environment that runs in a standard setup. So you do want to make sure you get the JDK. This installs very easily, it's not too bad of a download, and you'll be set and ready to go. All you need is the Java configuration, you don't need any of the extra bits and pieces that are available, though if you get into Java development I do highly recommend it. Uh, you, you might want JavaFX or NetBeans or to download Eclipse from Eclipse.org. Finally, you need to download the Android SDK. Now, the Android SDK is developed, produced by Google, and you can go to developer.android.com SDK and be able to download the Android SDK. All you need to do is select the correct version of the Software Developers Kit for whatever operating system you are using in your environment. I do recommend that you do follow the SDK installation steps to make sure that everything does work correctly so that you don't have any problems in the future as you're installing. This is a slow process. It can take quite a while to get everything installed, but once it is installed, you shouldn't have any problems with your application. Finally, we need to get your device set up. After the Unity 3D is installed on your system, after you've got the Java JDK installed and the Android SDK installed on your computer, then we need to get your Android device. Now you do need an Android device to be able to test the environment correctly. So first thing you need to do is install it and make sure that the driver for the Android device is installed correctly. Now I had some challenges getting this configured on my system. The key to getting everything to work correctly and smoothly on a Windows system is to make sure that the Android phone is showing up in your device manager. On a uh, Mac, it, I didn't have any problems getting it to install, but on the PC it was a little bit more of a challenge. It showed up as an other device without it being registered. The key to getting everything to work correctly is to go to your properties for your uh, device driver, go to the dri driver detail, do an update to the driver, browse to your program files, Android, SDK, Windows, and tell it to do a next, and it will find the correct driver for your Android phone so that you'll be able to use everything correctly inside the environment. After that, you need to check and make sure that the Android device bridge is working correctly. Now, the Android device, the ADB, is what makes it possible for you to be able to copy everything to the Android device that you've got and be able to test it in that environment. The ADB may require copying from the platform tools to the tools area in your environment. On the Mac, this didn't seem to be a problem, but on the, the PC, it did. On the Mac, this wasn't too much of a problem, but on the PC, it was critical. You do need to go to the platform, tools, find the ADB, ADB Win API, and the ADB Win USB API, and copy those all over to the tools folder. That's where uh, Unity is looking for things to be installed. So just co cut and paste, or I mean, copy and paste these to the correct location, and you should have no problem with it then being able to recognize the device. There is one final check that you need to do to make sure 
that ADB is working correctly and the easiest way to do that is to pull up a command window and go to your program files Android SDK for Windows and you can then go to the tools folder and do an ADB devices and if your device is showing up then everything is working correctly if it does not show a list of devices in the ADB devices then the system is not properly recognizing your device and you need to go back and go through the steps make sure your driver and everything is copied to the right place and possibly update your phone as well to make sure that everything works correctly final step is to go into your phone itself and turn on the USB de debugging this is done through the settings go to the applications then to development and click on the USB debugging checkbox so that it will be turned on and you can test and debug your application. After our system is all configured and ready to go, then we're ready to get Unity set up and start developing our first project. So let's go to File and create a new project. This new project I'm going to call um, Android. The only package that I'm going to import into this project is the standard assets for mobile. When you hit the Create, you'll see Unity close for a moment or two while it changes over to your new project. And then you should open up with a window that looks a lot like mine. Right now, all we have in this system is our main camera and our standard assets. So we're ready to now start configuring everything. I'm going to real quickly go over the basics of the Unity engine just so that you become a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, there's some great tutorials on the Unity site that go in much more in depth than what I'm going to do. But if this is your first time through, you might be a little confused by what we're looking at. So we've got our standard menus at the top. Then below the menu area, you've got a control panel as well as the ability to switch between scene and game view. Scene view is where you're going to do most of your design work, whereas game view will allow you to t play test your game on the fly and be able to work out any bugs before you go to publish. So scene, as I said, scene view is going to be the majority of your work in here. Underneath the scene and game views, you've got your hierarchy. The hierarchy is what is currently in the scene or available to be in the game at that any particular time. Project is just simply a list of files and folders that are available to this particular project. So right now I've just simply got my standard assets in this project. Very soon we're going to have a, quite a few more assets available to us and being using those inside the environment as well. And then finally, off to the right-hand side here, we've got our inspector. The inspector is critical. It's going to be what allows you to modify and change the environment quickly and easily uh, throughout the game to be able to ch make modifications and edit your scripts and the textures for your particular applications. Now, let's take a look at how to configure everything for our Android device. I'm going to go to File and down to Build Settings. Underneath the Build Settings you can then select what is your target platform. My particular target platform in this case is going to be the Android and I'm going to go ahead and set, set Debug Build so that we can be able to test everything as we're going along and tell it to switch the platform. It'll run, re-import what needs to be done for that particular environment and change everything over so that it'll be able to talk to and access and create the game properly for that particular environment. If you click on player settings you can go in and modify the player settings for that particular environment as well. In this case we are, as I said we are working on the Android so I can upload a default icon set the basic resolution and default orientation for this game. I'm going to do a little space shooting game where we're going to shoot some asteroids. So I'm going to tell it to go to landscape. We can set the icon, the splash, splash image, which I'll do here in a little bit, and other settings as well as our published settings for the final device. And we'll go through those steps as well before we actually publish to our Android device. So we've got our Android set as the default platform that we're shooting for and that's now ready to go. 
Okay, so let's get our environment set up for this particular game. What I want to do is create a simple starship that can shoot asteroids in space and keeps track of points, however many asteroids we shoot, and then if I run into an asteroid, I lose a life. So nothing overly complex, but it should be playable and enjoyable on the Android device, uh, Android phone. So let's start with setting our background for this. I'm going to create a folder that's going to contain all of my materials. I'm also going to have a folder for my scripts. Now just so you're aware, I do prefer to use my uh, JavaScript for scripting language when I'm working in the Unity engine. Um, so you'll find this whole tutorial done through the JavaScript. Okay, so I've got materials. Um, I've already created a star background that I'm going to use for my skybox in, the, in Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and pull that in and drag that into the mater materials. Of course, we could also go to Assets and Import Asset and pull in the PNG file that way. I've kept this file very small. It's about 20K in size when it's all said and done. And there it is. You can see that it's uh, a nice star background and should work very well for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to come over here to my standard assets for the mobile device and go to the skybox material. Now currently the skybox material is set with a, a typical uh, Terrian type sky instead of a space type sky. So I'm going to drag my star background over to there. Now we've got that as the star background. And then we need to go over to the prefabs and select skybox in the prefabs. And as you can see it's already associated with the star background that we have up there. So I'll drag that over to the main camera. And now in my main camera view, I've got a box type environment with all the stars around me in a nice simple box. The scale for the skybox is currently set at 3000. That might be a little small for this project, but we'll leave it at 3000 for the time being. And then if it becomes a problem, we will uh, increase that size. That, that is kind of small, but we're going to leave it at that for the time being. That's the nice thing. We can adjust these things all later as we need to. So we've got a background set. We've got a uh, skybox set for the, the particular environment. If I click on my camera view, you can now see that I've got it. And if I go over to game view, you can see this is exactly what the camera sees inside the environment. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get some player controls into the environment. Uh, to do that, I'm going to, I've created a starfighter that I'm going to use because I've got plans for this later on. This, this is not the only demonstration that's going to be created from this. I'm foreseeing something that will be pretty cool, possibly even multiplayer, that can be played on the mobile phones. So I've got a simple starfighter ship. Uh, done in 3ds Max. I'm going to go ahead and pull that over as well and allow it to import and as also need to go ahead and pull in all of its materials that are associated. Okay, so we've pulled in the Starfighter and the textures that go with it. I do need to reapply the textures that go with the Starfighter so that it's ready to go. That'll only just take a second or two to be able to get all that configured. Um, right now the ship doesn't look exactly the way I want it to, so we'll, we'll apply those real quick uh, just simply by go, going to the particular item and simply dragging it onto the various materials. So we'll just simply drag it on, go to the particular uh, texture and dragging it onto those materials. There we go. And now, inside my Starfighter, those textures are all applied to my ship and it's ready to go. Maybe not as flashy as I would like, but for what I'm trying to do and for this particular uh, game that 
finished project, the Starship's really not that critical. So we might want to tweak that again later on, but it gives me something to work with. Of course, one of the nice things about the Unity engine is that I could have just simply created a sphere or a cube for a placeholder until my uh, modeling is done and apply everything to that and then add the new mesh at the very end of the project. But since I already had this done, I went ahead and went with it. So I'm going to add the Starfighter to my hierarchy here and apply my main camera to the Starfighter. So there's my Starfighter. Uh, its location is, I'm going to zero the, that out to make it easier to work with. And that this is the XYZ positions for our transforms. We can set the XYZ of the particular starship or item that we're loading into the environment. Or we, we can also set the rotation of the device. Currently my rotation is set at 270.00, which actually will work very well for my camera once I move my camera onto the starship. There we go. And we're just about set here. You may have to do a little tweaking with the XYZ position of the camera inside the fighter to get it to look the way you want. Currently I've got it set at negative one on the Y axis so that it's not showing any of the model. If you wanted it to be behind the item, in this particular case that may be a two, and there you can see in our camera preview, we can see the tail end of the spaceship. Uh, one gets us a lot closer. So just by adjusting these units in the, the in, inspector, we're able to control the camera's location as well as how things are going to look inside the environment. Now I'm creating a first person view here instead of a third person view or over the shoulder type look, so I really want it to be a negative one so it's at the front of the view of the spaceship. Um, so everything's going very good here. Do keep in mind that as we're working with units, units of course are whatever the developer or designer decides they're going to be inside the environment. By using decimal places we can turn our 3,000 units for our skybox into 30,000 or 300,000 if we want just by uh, making our movements very small. Generally speaking in most instances the designer and your modeler tend to think of units as one unit equals one meter but that needs to be decided and agreed upon between your designer and your modeler at the very beginning of your project as to what one unit is equal to. So I've got everything configured the way I want it to look now for the Starship. We've got that properly imported as well as all the materials that go with it. We've also got our skybox set up. Might want to set some lighting in the environment. I'll pull back a little bit using the wheel on my mouse and I'm going to go ahead and add some light to it and we'll move that around on the XYZ your arrows here the yellow red and blue arrows show your movement on your XYZ axis if I want to rotate which I do I can easily change to the rotate view and change the direction of my lighting inside the environment which will give us some shadows and a nice uh, good effect inside of what we're trying to create here. So that'll work. Uh, we're not going to get real fancy inside the environment because uh, we don't want to bog down the phone that we place this on. So this should do very well for what I'm trying to do. So now we've got a model We've got the camera set up, we've got a skybox set, and we have lighting. The last thing we need to do before going on to anything else is to make sure that we have saved the current level that we've been working on. Now levels are used inside of Unity to organize exactly what you're doing. Whenever You're all used to using levels whenever you play any type of game. Anytime you see a load screen or you change from area to area, that is changing scenes or levels. So we need to save this scene. So we'll just go to File save scene and I'm going to name this one level one. Now the level is saved and when anytime you need to go away and save your project or save your scene everything is organized based upon that level and when we add additional levels later on we'll be able to easily shift back and forth between them.